All right, guys. Uh, welcome. Uh, good to see some of you guys. Uh, some of the seniors, you know, I was just telling Zach, kind of hard when you see someone for every day for three years and then all of a sudden they're gone, you know what I mean? And uh, hopefully things have gone well for each of you. Uh, this is a little bit different than normal as far as football banquets go. It's the first time we've ever had to do it this way, but there's been a lot of first times this year too. So uh, well, I'm glad we get a chance to be here with you and uh, get a chance to honor some of you guys because some of you had a really good year and we want to make certain to take time to not only recognize that, but also if uh, you're a young and upcoming guy or you're a guy who's aspiring to be one of those guys, you kind of see what it takes. So I think that's real important. As I said earlier, all you guys have a gift bag there. Make certain that you put whatever trash you have back in the bag. We'll throw that stuff away here at the end. Um, first of all, thanks to Ms. Richardson for getting those cupcakes and then those bags put together for you. Uh, we started this year with three simple goals. Number one, that we were going to provide a safe place for you to play. Two, that we're going to do all the little things necessary in order to give us a chance at a season because there was a time in which we didn't know if that was going to be the case or not. And then the third thing was make the playoffs. Uh, looking back, we accomplished a lot of good things. Uh, some of the things came a little faster than others. But I want to commend you, number one, on handling it. Uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't easy. Uh, it was tough sometimes. You know, the couple, first time you ever got out there to practice and forgot to bring your own water, it was real tough. You know, so uh, it's, it's one of those things that you got to work out on top of it. Uh, we're recording a copy of this right now. We'll put it on to Sports U so your parents have a chance to watch it because normally we would uh, have a chance to invite them. Uh, what we'll do is uh, go through it. But uh, to the parents, we want to thank you for the opportunity to work with your kids and uh, trust us as we had to work through our new safety procedures and, and work with us as we had some growing pains in some areas and were successful in others. Uh, the final goal is although we didn't reach the playoffs, we felt like we took some big steps towards making that goal, uh, goal number three, a reality. Uh, beyond the success that we had with our sub-varsity teams, we tripled our varsity win total. Uh, one of those wins came against Southwest. We ended up going two rounds deep, and we were one play away from beating another two-round playoff team. Uh, the big trick for us is to hold it together. And I think that's the thing that's consistent, as we've talked about since off seasons began, is that uh, we've got to make certain that we develop depth and that each of us are ready to go when our time comes. Uh, beyond those bright spots, uh, we were able to stay the course. We had to avoid making mental mistakes. Uh, individually, we doubled our overall number of all district players. We tripled our number of academic all district performers. But most importantly, I think we had good senior leadership. And I think that's something that was a test to each of you. Those of you guys that did that, uh, appreciate you fighting through all the adversity and uh, working towards that and finishing strong as well as just finishing your senior year. Uh, with all that said, Coach Owens and Coach Rod have been putting together a highlight video for you this season. What we're going to do is we're going to get that cranked up right now, and then uh, we'll watch that, and then after that we'll go through our individual award stuff. All right, thanks. Coach Owens. A lot of good things, guys. A lot of good things. Just got to be consistent with it is the big deal. Do it this one instead. All right, a couple things we want to go through. We're going to uh, introduce and recognize each of our sub varsity guys real quick. You guys will get a certificate. What I want you to do is you come around, uh, come up and get your certificate. You'll move right over here to the side. We'll get a photo of you. And then that way you have something to uh, keepsake type deal. Uh, starting out with the blue and silver guys, um, Coach uh, Davis, Coach Silvis, if you'll help me hand out the certificates and so forth with those guys coming up. Guys, if you come up, what I want you to do is uh, we'll slide right up here to the front. Uh, you'll shake hands with uh, one of the coaches. We guys right over in here. We'll do it right here. And then they'll slide over to the side to do that. Yeah, Joe, come over in front. All right, first up, uh, Manuel Adame. Manuel had a good season, both sides of the ball. Look for good things from him. Next up, Oscar Carlos. <laughs> Mr. 20 questions himself. Boy, I tell you what, you had a good year also. Christian Castaneda. <laughs> right future, Christian. Uh, Peter Senega. every time they ran up the middle. Good deal. Next up, James Fernandez. Next up, Aiden Gutierrez.
<laughs> there you Josh go. Horner. Next up, Isaiah Hernandez. That kid runs the ball tough. Michael Hinton. Mr. Electric himself, Ethan Jordan. Next up, Kyle Kaufman. Trey Lewis. Big Lou. Good year on both sides of the ball. Noah Long. Heck of a football player. Got a question in his dress, though. Next up, Daniel Lopez. Nathaniel Perez. Little Bulldog Jacob Vasquez. Francisco Castillon. Next up, Joaquin Ramirez. Aiden Retta. Fabio Reyes Garcia. Colin Richardson. Alan Rivera Centrum. Christian Robinson. Come on, Chris. Tyrell Taylor. Isaiah Trujillo. <laughs> Next, we'll move on to the varsity squad. We'll do these guys by number. Uh, as I call you up, I'll also call up your position coach, say a few words about you. Uh, you'll slide over, take a photo on the side also, as well as get your certificate, and then we'll follow this up with individual awards. Uh, number one, Tanner Johnson, Coach Henry Burke. Mr. Tanner Johnson, two-way player, balled out for us. I was waiting for you, Coach, I promise you. But hey, just balled out for us on defense. And me being a first-year coach, well, high school coach, it, had, it was great having a corner like Tanner balling out for us. Appreciate you, Tanner. Matthew Maldonado, Coach Silvis. Matthew Maldonado, Coach Silvis. Ethan Drew, Coach Sam Bucos are up next. <laughs> Matthew, being a transfer from Wisconsin, uh, big deal, big help, um, especially on the blue squad, where he uh, showed great physical toughness and competitiveness, and uh, eventually we brought him up to uh, varsity, so he's going to be a big help for us uh, next year. He's improved. Good see. Zach Cosra is up next. All right, I, I hate how my voice sounds with these things. Um, anyway, so Crum came up, was with us all year. He does basically whatever you ask him to do. He played six positions, seven, three different teams, yeah. So 
he can do whatever you ask him to do, and he's, he is a great example of what a great teammate looks like and a great football player. Thank you. Next up, Logan Travis, Coach Silvis. Here we go, Zach Cosseros. Zach was a uh, two-year varsity guy for us, uh, played quarterback. Uh, when he started out as a sophomore, he was an H-back and probably about 35 pounds heavier and uh, saw an opportunity. Uh, he's a guy who showed up each and every day with a good attitude, uh, stepped up and filled the role. You know, a team, a good team is always full of guys that are going to play their roles. And uh, Zach was a guy who was willing to accept whatever role it was. Uh, you know, he is uh, he has definitely got the one and zero mentality. Uh, Short-term memory, able to push through things, is going to be really good off in life because of that. Zach, congratulations on your year, and uh, good luck to you the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. Next up, Logan Travis, Taylor Miller, you're on deck. So, one thing I can say about Logan is that he's got heart. Okay, he's a very emotional competitor. Uh, whether we're up by 100 or down by 100, he lets us uh, know it, okay? Uh, but most importantly, he's a great as asset on defense, okay? He's competitor, he's gonna go get it, and you know, we look forward to him becoming a leader this year. Next up, Kayla Miller. Jose Solis, you're on deck. Slowly making his way. Uh, Jalen took off this year. He had uh, last year a last year he had a knee injury, so he had to work his way back. Uh, maybe worked his way a little too far back, but um, he definitely uh, made teams aware of where his presence was on the field. Half the time they had to run away from him; the other half they had to deal with him. Uh, that's kind of the, the mentality that we want our defensive line to have, and uh, we look forward to see what his senior year is next year. Jeff. Jose Solis, Dad Joey Mojica. How are you doing, Jose? Yeah, I'll, I'll get, I'll get you on the okay. Hold on. So, uh, Mr. Solis is a, a a program guy. Okay, he gets it. He started off as a silver guy, you know, uh, but football meant more to him than just the average person. He kept working at it, and eventually, he became. A, a key player for us. And eventually, uh, this coming his senior year, he's going to be a very big deal for us defensively. And uh, it's, it, it's great to have him on the team, and we look forward to him uh, growing. Next up, Joey Mojica. Robert Vasquez, you're on deck. Coach Green, you'll have Vasquez, Payne, and Gonzalez. Joe Mojica, a two-year running back for us. Uh, he was a guy that last year, you know, got some spot time here and there. And this year, he committed himself during the off or this past season. He committed himself during the off season to get in the weight room, get stronger. Uh, boy, he has got a bright future. Uh, Mama is what I like to say, because he can weave around in the holes and do some things. Not afraid of contact. Uh, he is a guy that gets after it each and every day and competes. If you ever catch him on a Zoom deal, it's always dark in the background because his son's like, or his uh, snake is like allergic to light. So it took me a while to figure it out. I thought he was the godfather for a while because he was always hiding out in the dark. But uh, Mojica is good. He's a dude, and uh, he is a dog for the team. Uh, we appreciate his hard work in the offseason. We look forward to what you're going to do as a senior. Next up, Robert Vasquez, Coach Green, Jason Payne, you're on deck. All right, so everybody knows Bulldog up here, and uh, Bulldog is one of our leaders on this team, whether he likes to be or not, and Robert is always a pleasure to coach and be around. He is a true student of the game. I don't know if you guys know this, but Robert is in the office almost every day asking me about a particular formation or scenario or call, and his study of the game and his commitment to bettering his craft is why he's going to be an outstanding not only football player and athlete, but a person um, when he does graduate and move on. And we enjoy Bulldog being out here every day. We look forward to another year with him, and we're going to sure savor the last one because I'm going to miss this guy a bunch. Jason Payne. Gonzo, you're on deck. I got two in a row here. 
Jason Payne coming up on deck right here. Jason is um, what we would call a flexible player and he has worked about three positions now on the varsity level and has really shown in his ability to understand the, the play, the, his fit and things like that. He's worked his way around now. He's worked linebacker and outside linebacker. He gives us everything he's got every day. He's got a fantastic attitude. He's always ready to step up when his number's called. He's not afraid to get in there when he has to and we truly appreciate what Prane brings to our program. I look forward to another offseason with Jason, honing in some of that craft and getting him to a starting spot next year where he can start um, where, he, where his goal is, I'm sure, to be a starter and contribute a little bit more to this team, more than he already does, which is a ton. Jason, we appreciate everything. Josiah Perez on deck. Isaiah has come a long way. Um, he'll tell you, you know, I think Isaiah's first, uh, my first year was the end of his first year. And so got to know this guy as we went along. Um, he's one of the quietest players I've ever been around when it comes to um, celebration and excitement. It's not that he's not afraid to, he's just so focused. I really think that's what it is. He knows what he has to do and he's really committed to making sure he does his job. He's grown so much, not only as a person, but as a player this year. It's been a tremendous um, pleasure for me to get to coach this young man along and to see where he was to where he is now, starting player, got district uh, mentions and some accolades on that. And it, it's been really great. He's gonna be a very successful man after this because he has tons of excellent traits and characteristics and we look forward to finding out where you go in life and best of luck to you. Next up, Josiah Mata. Get my camera angle here. You're good. Uh, Josiah right here, um, you know, he's what we consider a versatile player. Uh, came on last year, uh, he's cleaned up a little bit of the, you know, the go attitude that we wanted to have our, have our linebackers develop. Uh, he's gotten a little bit bigger over the years, so we started to move him a little further out, maybe a little further down. Um, I like his mentality. I like he comes to work, puts it in, doesn't matter what's going on in front of him, he's going to try his best to learn when he has to and take this role to whatever it needs to be. Right, whether that's going to be inside linebacker, outside linebacker, defensive end, he's going to put forth his best effort and he's going to try and earn that starting position. And that's what we should all have as a player on this team. Good job, Shia. See you next year. Next up, Gavin Gajardo. Uh, Josiah had the difficult task of uh, becoming a first year varsity player, sophomore. Uh, had to catch up to the game real quick. Uh, a lot of things came at him real quick. I can tell you he's 10 times uh, more open to coaching this year than he was last year, right? Um, he's put in a lot more work in the off season and it's clearly showing. He's getting a little bit stronger, a little bit faster. He's starting to understand the game a little bit better. And more importantly, he's really trying to hone in that craft, become a better player, a better teammate for everybody around. Uh, we look forward to everything he's got next year as a junior and to taking off further than he has already. Jeff Next up, Gavin Gajardo. I've uh, been thinking about this one for a while. Okay. Gavin is a hard worker. He uh, does what he's asked. He's getting better every day. And uh, we expect a lot from him next year. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Jose Juarez on deck, Trey Howard. And a few words. You can't tell right now, but Jose's probably smiling. He smiles all the time. Uh, he has come a long ways this year. He works hard. He is a uh, true, uh, truly working at becoming a great offensive lineman. He's always trying to find a better way. He's always trying to ask questions. I think he's going to have a great year next year also. He did a good job this year. Followed by Ruben Macias. Hadn't seen Trey in so long I didn't notice he was here. Okay. Trey, uh, same thing as Jose except Trey is a senior. He has worked a hard and he's become a great leader this year. I think he was one of the main leaders of the offensive line. And uh, he also, he'll do whatever he needs to do. And 
He is a great athlete. <laughs> Next up, Coach Davis, Ruben Macias, on deck, Jason Sanchez. All right, so I had the privilege of working with Ruben for the past couple of years. Um, he's developed as a as a usual role for our for our team, not only for just being around here and, and helping out when it is, but really just being a better teammate. He came from Silver last year all the way up to varsity, rotational starter, right? You and Nick going at it, and you know that was. That was a big step for him coming from a junior year to a senior year was putting forth that extra effort to really take over that role because there's a lot of other people in front of you that could have made the play right but Ruben wanted to step up and be that guy uh, he was always here never missed and in fact I'm pretty sure he probably had the best attendance on this team bar one other kid um, he was always willing to step into a role and he was always willing to get dirty whenever he needed to uh, that was scout defense specials whatever he was out there and he'd stick it out and sweat until he passed out Okay, this is a, an ideal candidate for one of our players of the year. All right, we'll see where it goes. Um, I appreciate everything you had, Ruben. Good job. Good luck to you everywhere out. Next up, Jason Sanchez, followed by Pork Chop. Jason, sophomore this year. He is one of the best sophomore offensive linemen I have ever had. And that's after 32 years of doing this. The sky is the limit. He works hard. He never complains. I just think he's going to be, he is a great young man. Next up, Marcus Romero, followed by Jason Harmon. Marcus, or as he likes to be called, Pork Chop, that kind of answers the whole thing about him right there. Anybody that want to be called Pork Chop. Okay. He is a true offensive lineman. Okay. All I got to do is talk about food, and that's about the only time that he listens to me, I think. Okay. <laughs> Again, he, he's got another year. He works hard. Uh, good things are going to happen. You just got to keep working. Last but not least, Jason Horner. Jason's two-year varsity starter. Uh, played at H-back, played some at outside linebacker, in pretty much wherever he's asked. Uh, takes care of all the roles as a deep snapper. Uh, tremendous kid, tremendous player. Takes care of his business in the classroom as well as on the field. You know, Jason, uh, the year started out tough for him. Uh, you know, he had some adversity that, that I hope no one ever has to face, but, you know, through the, through the support of, of y'all and his friends and so forth, uh, Jason kept his head down for his family and kept plugging away. And I uh, want to congratulate you on a good year. Uh, you know, life doesn't always throw you the same cards as everybody else, but sometimes you got to make the most of each one of them. And that's a lesson that uh, he not only has learned, but he also helps teach. And uh, if you're looking for a role model, someone who's going to embody the things that you want to do uh, in all aspects of your life, I think Jason is a great example of that. Uh, Jason, congratulations on a good year. Look forward to your senior. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, Satan. the state. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I had to save it for last because he's so fast, you know, we don't want him to slip by. All right, so Braylon showed up July, the end of July, and in the time he was here, Braylon played, I think, also six positions, and if you ask Braylon, I can play anything. Um, doesn't matter, he's the fastest guy on the team. Um, <laughs> Braylon, Braylon's a great kid. I wish Braylon had been with us all four years. Braylon works hard. Braylon's always here. No matter what happens, Braylon's going to do what you tell him to do. He's going to go hard every single time. And he always asks the question, Coach, what, what do I? What do you need me to play? I'll play whatever you need me to play, so let me play. So thank you, Braylon, for being here, and we appreciate everything. All 
time while Brethren's taking his uh, photos. We'll keep it under 10 there, Brethren, so we don't break the internet. I uh, want to talk a little bit about academic golf district. Guys, uh, at the end of each year, there's a series of things that you can basically achieve based on your performance on and off the field. Uh, one of those is academic golf district. In order to be able to earn this honor, you had to maintain a 90 average basically during the course of the season. Uh, this year we had 10 players achieve that. Uh, that last year we had four. Uh, so that was one of our goals was to increase that overall number. Uh, one of the things that I do at the end of each season is I contact the teams that make the playoffs in our area. And one of the questions that I always ask them as we're looking for ways to improve our program is how many academic performance did you have? And I'm going to tell you on most of the playoff teams, it's about 90% of them, they have about 60 to 75% of their kids on the academic all district team. For us to carry a, var a varsity roster, that means that we need to set that goal at about 30. So it's important that we take care of those business and do the things that we're supposed to so we can focus on beating our, team, uh, beating our opponent each and every week. Uh, I'd like for these guys to stand up at their seat right now, be recognized academic all district players, Michael Bischoff, Robert Vasquez, Ethan Crum, uh, Jose Juarez, Elijah Reyes, Nick Luna, Jacob Williams, Joey Mojica, and Jason Harmon. Congratulations. <laughs> This year we saw winning groups in both our uh, sub-varsity groups. The silver team, uh, due to circumstances, basically played uh, a mix of freshman A teams and uh, freshman B teams. They had an overall five to four mark. Uh, two of those occurred uh, in weeks that they had to play up. Blue team finished out seven, two, and one, uh, with one of those losses coming against the JV team and one of the ties also against the JV team. Uh, we want to take time to recognize some of the standout performers on each of these bunches. Uh, first of all, with the silver bunch, uh, each of you guys, if you come up to the front, we'll get a photo with all three, uh, with all three of you. Uh, talking first on Lyman of the Year, uh, Josh Harmer and Kristen Castaneda. Uh, Castaneda. <laughs> Next up, looking at skill players. Uh, skill players of the year of the silver bunch, we had two. Um, Colin Richardson, Ethan Jordan. Finally on special teams, we had one uh, this year with Silver Bunch, Edgar Garcia. I believe he's in soccer now. <laughs> Guys, one of the week, each week we look at basically Lobos of the week, and this is one of the things that we pick from whenever we do these at the end, is the number of repetition and consistency had in each of those areas. Um, going on to the blue team, looking at Lyman of the year, we had two that we'd like to recognize. One is Manuel Adami, and the other is Kristen Robinson. Yeah, go that way. It's all right. With the Blue Bunch looking at skill players of the, uh, the year, uh, we had two. One of them was a, uh, both of them were two-way players looking at Noah Long and Peter Sinega. Special teams looking at a return guy, taking care of a lot of different roles. Uh, special teams player of the year with a blue bunch, Nathaniel Perez. <laughs> at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Ruben Macias and uh, Elijah. I don't think he's here, but Ruben, come on up. With the changes that resulted from COVID this past year, uh, we had to make a few adjustments, uh, not only to our practice, but also to our team meetings. One of the things we had to do was move our varsity team meetings to Thursday mornings after the kick of the field. Uh, we had two parents who basically stepped up and helped organize our breakfast each week. You know, many of us were uh, appreciative of it, and uh, it was something that was special. It was a time for us to allow to keep some normalcy in, a, in an unnormal time. Uh, with this, uh, Kim Torres, who's Eli uh, Elijah's mama, and Tammy Macias, who was Ruben's mama, were two that were there each and every week in order to be able to help organize it and get things done for that. Uh, what we've done is we've had some football helmets that were signed. Uh, we'll get Elijah to him, and I want you to take yours and thank your mama personally for each of us for the things that she did this, this year. All right, thank you.
moving on to varsity accolades. Um, each of you guys that received all district, uh, either offensive all district, uh, defensive all district, or special teams. On the back side of your certificate, you have a laminated uh, sheet of the stuff that we released around Christmas time. If you receive one of those awards, I want you to stand up right now and, uh, and be recognized by your teammates as an outstanding player, as recognized by your district. Guys, and the way those things go is that we nominate them, and then basically we can't vote on them individually. It's voted on by the other opposing coaches within our district. Uh, first team all district, and second team all district, and then honorable mention. And each of those things are there. So if you receive one of those, it's because you were recognized by the other coaches in your district. Uh, if it was up to us, we'd give each and every one of you one. Uh, but ultimately, that's not the case. But it is a huge honor. So if you receive one of those all-district awards, receive that other day, I want you to stand up right now to be recognized by your teammates. <laughs> more of you than that, stand up. If you got one of the pictures in the back, stand up now. There you go. All right. In addition to that, we do team deals at the end of each year. Uh, varsity accolades were chosen by offense, defense, and special teams positions. Each of these young men's on the field performance is recognized as above and beyond towards the achievement of our team's goals. The awards were chosen based on player of the week performances and overall impression left on the coaching staff consistently throughout the year. Uh, we'll start with our offensive side, offensive players of the year dealing with offensive linemen as described by Coach Brinkley. Uh, the linemen are a special breed, the hardest working athletes on the field. They get it, they get hit or get hit on every play. The big man rarely gets their name in the paper and they're usually only noticed if they do something wrong at a game. Uh, there's year's offensive line, this year's offensive lineman of the year award goes to Adam Ortiz and Jacob Williams. The guys are not able to be with us today, so we'll make sure to get these awards to them. Uh, next, moving on to offensive backs. Running back of the year award goes to an offensive workhorse, someone who is going to be physically and mentally tough enough to carry the ball 15 to 20 times a game. They need to give great effort and work with the offensive line to move the sticks consistently. They, uh, it takes great pride in their blocking, and this year's recipient of that award is Joey Mojica. Receiver this year, the offensive receiver of the year award is given to a student athlete who excels for the team on the perimeter of the offense. Uh, they're asked to take care of a lot of many of the small parts of the aspect of the game. This requires them to be mentally and physically uh, involved at all times, be willing to do whatever the team needs. This year's offensive receiver of the year award goes to Tanner Johnson. to the defensive side. Uh, we have actually co-honorees uh, in each of the three categories this year. I thought on our defensive side of the ball, it's an area that we really improved this year overall consistently. Uh, it's going to be an area that we have to continue to prove if we're going to reach our goal in the playoffs. Defensive lineman of the year, the defensive lineman of the year award is given uh, to those who selflessly own their position and created opportunities for others around them. Elevate the play in the trenches uh, to, the, uh, to own the line of scrimmage. The ideal quality should be aggressive, nasty, Immovable mountains of strength and speed. Uh, we have two players at, this, at the same level throughout the season who uh, could not give it uh, to only just one, so we chose Nick Luna and Jalen Miller. <laughs> Big cat. <laughs> Moving on to linebacker. Linebackers, linebackers is also shared by a, a pair of Lobos. Uh, linebacker of the year is given to the players who excel as a leader of the defense. Also shows exceptional class, effort, and grit, and they're the heartbeat of the defense. This award this year goes to Isaiah Conzo Gonzalez and Robert Bulldog Bosco. <laughs> well, be a good linebacker, you got to have a good nickname. So if you're a young linebacker and you don't have a nickname yet, you better start thinking. 
Next goes to defensive backs. This uh, award is given to kids who are natural born leaders, have the heart of champions, and who are the hardest workers on the team. Uh, this is a very difficult position that not only requires incredible athletic ability, but also intelligence. It is a high stress position and demands uh, constant focus and a short memory. This year's defensive back award goes to two. One is Artie Mendez, and the second is Elijah Reyes. With those, those two guys. Uh, moving on to special teams. Uh, early on, we started talking about this, and we showed you a picture of Billy Bates. Billy Bates was a guy who started out with the Cowboys a long time ago as a special teams only player, and he actually worked his way into being an all pro safety for the Dallas Cowboys. But it started with special teams, because special teams is one third of our group. Uh, it takes a unique group, it takes a runner and a hitter, and it takes an athlete. Sometimes specially, uh, special teams uh, is responsible for not only your field position, but also increases your odds of being successful and winning, uh, whether you're on offense or defense. Uh, this year we'd like to recognize two. One would be our punter kicker, Marshall Duquette, and the second one is for his returns, Eddie Martinez. Next award is the Gator Program Award. It's reserved for two or for a senior player who has grown up the most as a player since their sophomore year. The daily work ethic, commitment to the team was displayed in the personal choices and the amount of involvement from where they began to where they finished was amazing. Uh, this year we have two. Uh, this is my favorite award because it shows progress and it shows guys that may not always start at the top but not afraid to climb their way to get there. Uh, two guys we'd like to recognize this year, one is Kevin Garza, and the second is Trey Howard. My first impression of Trey was not real good. I think he was about fourth on the depth chart as a sophomore uh, when he first started out. He was a guy that just continued to work, uh, never got you know, his head down about anything. And uh, I'll tell you the thing that was impressive with him, sometimes when guys don't always get to what they, where they want to be as quick, then they sometimes shut it down or they hang their head or they lose confidence. And Trey was a guy who, who kept plugging away. Uh, he just kept working his way up and then all of a sudden he found himself as a starter at the end of his junior year and then had a great season as a senior. Congratulations, Trey. Final two awards we want to talk about. One is we want to recognize our team captains. The team will be uh, only as good as leadership on that team. Team captains are voted on by a team at the beginning of the year. Uh, being a team captain is about leading and setting an example, both on and off the field and good and tough times. Their attitude and effort helps encourage and elevate the players that are around them to be better players and be better people. Uh, being a team captain is as much a responsibility as it is an honor. This year, the four guys that we had thought I, I thought did a great job uh, not only by example, but also by voice. This year's uh, four captains, Robert Vasquez, Elijah Reyes, Joey Guajardo, and Jason Harmon. Congratulations, man. Final recognition for this afternoon goes to what we call our alpha dogs. Uh, you get into off season, you're going to be put into a company. There are always Bravo, Charlie, Delta Echo, Foxtrot, Golf, whatever it is, that, or, uh, whatever it is your group is. And we don't ever give that alpha group because one of the things that we stress and we always talk about our best players need to play a game and a half every Friday night. It means they need to start on one side and they need to be able to help out on the other side too if we're going to have a chance to be successful. Those guys are what we would consider our alpha dogs. Uh, they're going to get it done. They're players that got a ton of guts, ton of heart, and a lot of mental toughness, and not afraid to get out and work. Uh, our alpha dogs are two-way standout players. Our top football players, as we said, play a game and a half every Friday night. Uh, each of these three players embodied, I'm ready to go at any time attitude. These three young men answer the call every time. All three of them were recognized as all district players on both sides of the ball at one level or another. Uh, when you think of total effort, you think of these three guys, Robert Vasquez, Tanner Johnson, Elijah Reyes. Congratulations to these guys. You know, one of the reasons that we thought it was important, uh, guys, we wanted to do this with your parents. We wanted to do this in a normal setting. Uh, but because of the times, you know, we just didn't feel like it was the safest thing to do. But we did feel it was important to do. And one of the reasons that we did 
is because number one, to recognize the efforts of the guys that have, that have put it on the line and went out there and sacrificed for the team and for our school. And then the second thing is, is if you're a young guy or you're a guy who thinks you should have either got one of those awards or want to get one of those awards in the future, then you understand what it's about. You know, the hardest thing sometimes is just determining that, that every play counts, every down counts, treating every day like it's fourth and one and having that approach each and every day, having that one and oh mentality, having that quick start mentality, having all those things that we talk about all the time. You know, we're raised in a society sometimes that, you know, we want everybody to be a winner. And it isn't that way. Because at the end of the night, there's someone who wins and there's someone who loses. And the only way you truly lose is if you quit. And if you quit, then you never have a chance of winning. But if you work at it long enough, things will work out for you. And developing that persistence is important. Uh, if you didn't get an award tonight, or you did get an award, and you want one in the future, then you know what? you got to work at it each and every day. And it ain't about what you say, it's about what you do. And so your, uh, your actions are going to speak a lot louder than your words at all times. So make certain that you take care of it. You guys that are seniors, as I've told you before in an individual meeting, and i told you now, I'll tell you again, good luck to you. We look forward to great things from you. You understand? You know, you, you grow up representing the Lobos. Now you're going to go off to college, you're going to go off to work, and you're going to work with other guys that played high school football. And you're going to talk about your high school experience. Some of it was good. Some of it you wish could have been better. But it is what it is. And one of the things that's important is over the last three years, last four years, you guys have represented this school. And now this school will represent you. So understand that when you walk out of here, you'll always be a Lobo. And at any time, as we told you, because you completed a program and you fought your way through it, Guys, if I walk, if they still got malls 30 years from now, and I'm walking down the mall and I see you and your family, then I'm going to sit there and I'm going to look at your kids in the eye and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to tell them how much of a tough ass their dad was. I'm going to talk about how great a work ethic they had, how good of an attitude they had, because you guys chose to finish. You guys, you guys chose to do that. You don't recognize this because you spend most of your time around the people that have made the same choice. But when you get out in life and you start competing for jobs and you start competing for specific things, what you're going to realize is that you got a skill set that's different than everyone else's. And you're going to be successful because of that. We wish you the best, and we challenge you guys to go out and make a name for yourself and do well. Anytime there's anything we can ever do to help you, do not hesitate to call or ask. You understand? If it's in our means, we'll be glad to do it. You guys that are younger and are coming back, understand the importance of everything. It would have been real easy for us to kind of skip through but one of the reasons we chose not to is because we wanted you to see that it does count. We wanted you to see that there are steps. We talked about taking steps to get to that goal as a playoff football team and climbing that ladder. And the reality is, is I don't care if it's a five-foot ladder or if it's a 50-foot ladder, it has rungs. It has steps. And those steps are incremental gains that it takes to get to your goal. And the goal is to get to the top of the ladder. I think not only did we have to take those steps, but we also had to build a ladder. And that's probably been the toughest challenge. But as we've built that, we've put those steps on there. It's important that we maintain that, and the next group of guys that comes along takes those first three steps and then adds three to four more to it. And then the next group takes those three steps and adds three or four more to it. Because that's what it takes. You don't move from one place to the next unless something magical happens. If you've got the number one running back or the number one quarterback or the number one linebacker or whatever in the nation, then you know what, you'll jump up a lot, but that's not a program move. A program move is where the whole group starts to take their attitude and starts to move it in the right direction. Uh, we've got a great chance to have a good off season. There are plenty of distractions. There are plenty of excuses not to. But one of the things we've got to do is you've got two choices each and every day, either get better or get worse, because there is no staying the same. You understand? Congratulations on your year. Look forward to the best. Guys that are seniors, finish strong. Uh, we'll hit it rocking again in off season uh, tomorrow, normal deal. And then we'll keep on battling, take care of your grades, do the things that you're supposed to, and appreciate the opportunity to coach you guys. All right, have a good day.